Hey there, Builder Blog. It's me in my shop. And uh, I believe the phrase is, man makes plans and God laughs. As you know, I've been trying to build a ring spinner. It's gonna be my very first ring spinner. And the competition is less than a month away. Uh, is currently September 8th and I need to have something done on October 4th. So I have less than 30 days. And uh, I know a lot of people who've been watching a long time are like, we haven't seen anything yet outside some sketches and CAD and hopes and dreams. And are you an armchair builder? Are, is that is that armchairs? No, I, uh, I will not show up empty handed, but I am pulling an emergency cord for you see, if I leave my shop and I go outside and I go, to the shed of old things, where I keep Scorpios. Inside here is a dreaded box. For a once before, I did try to build a 12 pounder. And uh, it was so scary that uh, my the first time I turned it on, I was still living at home with my parents when I was 18. My uh, father came running out to the shop and he, he thought I had turned on the heavyweight for the first time. No, it was just a 12 pounder. A 12 pounder with a ridiculous amount of power. So let's go find it. It's only slightly spooky in here. But inside this crate from 20 years ago, we will find the H-bomb. So for those of you who do not know, H-bomb, well, five of my RoboGame gold medals, let's see, let's see, they're, they're right up there, five of them, are all thanks to a, a drum robot called the bomb. My mother used to always come out to the garage and she'd say, you're not building a bomb, are you? And uh, finally, after getting that question for 20 years, I said, yes, mom, I'm building the bomb. I had no idea when I made that sarcastic joke, and I think I still lent it to Daniel, that uh, that robot would go on to become my most successful build. He actually has more wins under his belt than even Scorpios. And you know, Scorpios has a, has a few trophies behind him, but uh, what made the bomb so special, it was a, a direct mounted axi motor. I, I think I was one of the first or second people to do it. I was definitely the first person to do a dead shaft with it. This is the old, old, old live shaft version. A dead shaft means there's a bar going across the top frame, which makes the whole frame more rigid. And then it's running on bearings. And so I said to myself, after winning my fifth RoboGames gold medal, I was like, let's go ahead and start winning some 12-pound gold medals. And so I, I literally one for one scaled up the bomb. Let's take a look. So here's the outer frame. All machine parts out of three quarters inch thick aluminum. But the real star of the show was this giant drum. It's about six pounds because the bomb has an eight ounce weapon. So, uh, and instead of, and I, I just scaled everything up. So the bomb's weapon teeth were literally just countersunk screws hanging out of the drum. And this thing has giant countersunk screws that hang out of this drum. In the same way, this was a direct mounted axi well, this is a direct mounted axi. <laughs> so, my my old bomb was always a two wheel drive, and that's what this was originally intended as. As a matter of fact, I still have its original motors and wheels here. We're not going to use these; these are a little out of date. But uh. Since I am going to be taking some time to update this, we have the two wheel sizes. We also have our lovely, lovely, lovely box from Repeat Robotics. 
So these beauties. After getting the motors in hands, I definitely like the Magnums. So, this is literally going to fit right there and right here. And with the weight I'm saving by switching to brushless and let me grab our two Lego wheels. I'm actually going to try putting the large diameter Lego wheel here on the back and then doing a belt up to the front. So this is the plan. Now, luckily, battery technology has taken a giant leap forward since I first made this robot. And uh, there's going to be plenty of extra room in here. I can run a much smaller battery that's lighter. And then I can run these two, which are lighter than this big thing. And I can use that weight to put a timing belt here. So, um, Manta, Manta borrowed a lot from the bomb when Nick was coming up. Him and his dad actually asked if they could take close-up photos of my robot and make a copy. And I said yes. And that became Tsunami. And Tsunami got real good and started winning a lot of awards. And then he scaled that up to make Manta. And so, since he originally borrowed from me, I'm going to borrow from him. And I'm going to go four-wheel and try to kind of copy what he's doing on the outside of Manta for the drive system. So, I don't have enough time left anymore to do machined parts. But luckily, all the machined parts for this robot are done. Um, but I do have enough time to send some stuff out for water jetting. So we're going to make some titanium side plates that will hold the two shafts. And then hopefully also make some forks off that. And then we'll do some TPU shock for each side. And mainly, basically the body's done. We're going to put that in. We're going to 3D print some stuff to hold all the components in place. And, uh... Now, I did lose my original weapon motor, but fortunately, through the magic of eBay, I was able to get a new one. So we're going to open this up and make sure the magnets still match. Because it has been 20 years. And uh, we should be able to wire this thing right now. So that's my crazy plan. I know, you're like... You keep changing plans, Zach. I have no idea which one you're really going with. Maybe I'm just doing this to keep the competition guessing. <laughs> Am I horizontal? Am I a ring spinner? Is it a giant bomb? You don't know. <laughs> no, it, it's, the, it's the thing I definitely just showed you. Um, I do want to thank Bishop Weiscarver, who not only sent me the rings for my ring spinner. Um, when I told them I had to change of plans, I needed new parts. They were nice enough to send those too. Thanks, guys. Sorry for being indecisive. Well, let's take a quick look what they gave me. Packed very nicely. Doo -doo -doo. Aha! And may I present my little tiny tensioners. So, when we do the four-wheel system... We're going to use these little guys to tension the belts. Now, you might just think that's just a random roller bearing, but it's not. Something that's really cool about the Bishop Weiss Carver system is this back part is eccentric. And it's so hard to see here. But as you tighten this nut down, it actually shifts the wheel up and down. And unlike in a lot of combat robots, if you try to put a tensioning system where you just have a slot so you can pull the wheel up and down, when you take a hard hit, the thing just slides up to the slot until you hit one end. Uh, since this is eccentric, um, I'll be able to adjust it up and down and then just tighten it in place. And it's already up against a hard stop. So thank you guys. And they, they do something called swaging. So that's why there's not even a bolt up here. So we have the little ones for in the drive and these bigger ones. We're also going to use for when the robot gets flipped upside down. So if we're driving along and then somebody flips us upside down, oh yeah, just like that, we're going to have a pair of these to ride on above the drum. 
make sure the drum doesn't hit the ground and send us flying. All right, I've got my repeat robotics box here. And since I'm opening up gifts from sponsors, we have our 80 amp drive ESC. I really appreciate the label. I totally would have mixed that up. 80 amp drive ESC and backup. Not sure, glad it's included. And another 80 amp backup. Another backup, because you know, I plan on frying this stuff. Backup. And then we have two of these smaller drive motors. Oh yeah, look at those bad boys. So here's the Magnum next to it. Just the Magnum just feels more solid. But it's bigger, it's heavier. I have two more of those because I was originally going to try a four wheel parts. Might have to go read, see what this is. And yeah, sweet. So six drive motors, six ESCs. And I think it's time to get soldering. And last but not least, from Castle Creations, a 100 amp Phoenix. So that should be able to handle my Axie, no problem. Let's see, do you have your stats on here? Of course you don't, I have to open you to find those. <laughs> and there she is, big bad outrunner. That looks rightish. Like All right, that looks like it's the right diameter. And it looks about the right length. Fortunately, this robot is so old and I cannot see the inside of that ring. I had to kind of measure and back figure out which motor I got. It looks like it's that one. So wish me luck. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I got my radio on. I've got one motor hooked up. I've got a big 14 volt battery powered on. Everything is soldered to that big switch. I've got my castle controller hooked to that motor. And then this little repeat robotics controller wired up to their motor. And we go, go. Oh, okay. Perhaps we should clamp that. Let's try the big one. Okay, we're spinning. Oh, but we are tripping pretty quick. We are not getting up to 100. I'm guessing we are hitting the 100 amp current flow on this pretty quickly. And I need to go to a bigger ESC. Okay. Let's see, let's clamp this other one down. So now we got the repeat robotics motor, the Magnum all hooked. Now we have the Magnum all hooked up. That's pretty awesome. Okay. Well, I'm going to give it to Repeat Robotics. They worked right out of the gate. I don't think this is actually Castle or Axie's fault. I think I just didn't match the correct controller to that giant <laughs> motor. But the battery is not hot, so at least they're not pulling so much current. We're cooking that. So this this is a 20 year old battery so i'm gonna see if i can find something a little better with better current all right guys this was a semi successful bench test i'd say we've definitely proven out the drive and uh now i just need to find a slightly larger controller to do the weapon any suggestions leave them in the comment section 
So up next, I'm gonna run inside. I'm gonna cat up a couple wheels real quick. And then I'm gonna get some DXFs together to send down to Van Bever Brothers to uh, cut me up some titanium. So I can actually get this drive system together. Hopefully this time next week, you'll see it driving. And the week after that, you'll see the weapon spin. So guys, uh, luckily this has been some pretty big progress this week. And if I can keep this pace up, I'll be ready for October 4th. So, all right, guys. I I say I'm pretty happy with the bench test. I, I need my Waiachi switches to show up. They should be here tomorrow. And then I will be fully ready to do a complete electronics layout. So I'm going to run inside and try to print up some wheels, or not specifically wheels, but the, um, the hubs to go inside my wheels. So when I do have my electronics all finished and wired, I can go do a drive test. Anyway, uh, please like and subscribe. Come back next week for the drive test and uh, wish me luck. And if you, uh, I think I'm going to take one of my subscriber suggestions and we're going to call this robot the Wise Carver. So I hope you guys are enjoying it and I will see you next week. As you guys can see, I have all the amiibos, all the amiibos, including the very rare black cat amiibo. It's very lifelike. Bye -bye. Hi, Bubba's. Bubba's. Say hi to the Builder Vlog. Go away, flesh creature. Oh, he wouldn't do that.